grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is called the Sunday of the Preparation, because it's the last Sunday we have to get ready to receive our Lord at Christmas. And John the Baptist prepares us, as he prepared God's people of old. John directs us toward Christ, and stirs, in, in a, stirs up in us a great honor for our Lord. And meanwhile, we see the devil at work, trying to bury Christ through various strategies. But fortunately, our foe will not succeed. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? The priests and Levites were the most respected people in Jewish society, and they were coming from Jerusalem, which was the most renowned city. The people must have thought this was a great honor for John. What an honor, John, it is to have such people inquiring after you, people so high and mighty. And the priests and Levites themselves show great respect for John, because they go to him directly and ask, Who are you? They show they're willing to take his own word for it. And they're clearly willing to let him have the highest title, that of Christ. We don't hear the priests and Levites offering this title, but we do hear in Luke chapter 3 that all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ. Popular opinion would have allowed John to claim the title, and the priests and Levites must have at least alluded to the title of Christ, otherwise John's response would seem to come out of nowhere. And he confessed, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. The priests and Levites persist in offering John high titles. What then? Are you Elijah? This is a reference to the Old Testament reading from a couple weeks ago, Malachi chapter 4. The Lord said through Malachi, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Now Jesus did identify John the Baptist as this Elijah. Jesus said concerning John in Matthew chapter 11, If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Why then does John deny the title? The Jews were expecting that the same Elijah that was taken up into heaven in a chariot of fire would himself return from heaven. John the Baptist and Jesus knew full well that John was not that Elijah. Rather, as the angel Gabriel explained about John in Luke chapter 1, he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now, John could have explained this, but he simply says, I am not. We see he's in no mood to talk about himself. John's testimony bears little resemblance to what have come to be known as testimonies in our day. To give one's testimony is often an occasion for personal storytelling, during which the audience learns a good deal about a human being, and scarcely anything about Christ. While there certainly is a way to relate one's experience of Christ's mercies in a way that magnifies Christ, nevertheless, modern-day testimonies tend toward personal honor rather than honor for Jesus. John won't have it. Are you the prophet? They asked. Certainly, John is a prophet. 
But the prophet refers to the prophet foretold by Moses, as we heard in today's Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. John was not this prophet. Jesus is. John simply answers, no. In spite of all the accolades and titles and honors that they're willing to heap on John, he does not even answer them ten words. And with the words that he does speak, he simply avoids their flattery. At this point, the priests and Levites tip their hand and acknowledge that they are there on official business to take John's testimony on public record and bring it back to Jerusalem. Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? They have now opened wide the door for John to say whatever he likes. And what does he do? He quotes from Isaiah chapter 40. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. In the priests and Levites, we see the devil's flattery. The devil flatters you as well. He pretends to honor you, and all the while is trying to puff you up with yourself. He will say to you, you are the greatest thing ever. Don't fall for it. The devil will show you how improved you are compared to that awful person you used to be. The devil will congratulate you on the work of your hands and tell you what a good job you are doing. Now, of course, the devil hates your good works, since God is pleased with your good works. And so, first of all, the devil will try to make you proud of doing something that God has not even commanded you to do. But if he cannot succeed in that, then the devil will tolerate real, actual good works, provided he can twist them to suit his purpose of making you proud. In sum, the devil will try to convince you that you are greater than Christ himself. Everyone else might need to confess their sins, everyone else might need salvation, but not you. And in the midst of such flattery, we turn to the scriptures as John did. With God's own words, we talk about ourselves and say the same thing about us that he does. This is what the word confess means. The word confess means to say the same thing. It can be a confession of sins. For instance, when we say the same thing about ourselves that Jesus says about us in Mark chapter 7. Out of the heart of man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. We must speak these words of ourselves. And we see that God's word sufficiently breaks our pride and keeps us humble, despite the devil's flattery. But this is not all the scriptures say about us. It says in 1 John chapter 3, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are his body, branches of him who is the vine, God's field, God's building, God's workmanship, the salt of the earth, light in the Lord, saints. These are all phrases in the scripture that describe who we are in Christ. We confess all of this as well. 
And from this we see that Christ has made us far greater than we could ever make ourselves by puffing ourselves up with the devil's flattery. Well, since the priests and Levites have made no headway with their flattery, they change their tactic and address John with accusation. We have a little note in the reading that leads us to expect this change in tone. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. Knowing this, we suspect that the priests and Levites have not been acting in good faith, and are in fact being two-faced and trying to catch John in his words, and are going to turn on him, which they now do. Then why are you baptizing? if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. Now this is a baseless accusation. The Heavenly Father had sent John to baptize, and John knows it. Later in John chapter 1, John the Baptist even refers to God as He who sent me to baptize with water. He could simply have said that to them. But once again, John does not get sucked into a trap of the devil and start thinking and talking about himself. His mind is on Christ. John says, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. John readily confesses his lowliness in comparison to Christ. But he doesn't stop there. He takes the opportunity to confess Christ. And this is the greatest sort of confession. <laughs> Certainly we ought to confess the truth about who we are. But even more glorious is the confession of who Christ is. Christ is far above us higher than the heavens are above the earth, as far as rank is concerned. Now, John, his birth was announced by an angel. He was miraculously conceived, since his mother was advanced in years. He could point to portions of the Old Testament that were specifically about him. He had the high honor of being the immediate forerunner of the Lord. And yet, John says he's not worthy of Jesus, not even to be his dirty slave and untie his sandals. Now, if one of the most respected men ever to walk the face of the earth said this about himself, then what are we? We are worms. We are the scum of the earth. And there's truth to that. <coughs> Yet the devil, with his accusations, does not want us to move beyond that. With his accusations, the devil will not only tell us how wretched we are, but will go on to say that God hates you, that you're a lost cause, that you have rebelled against him and made yourself an enemy of the truth, and don't stand a chance of being saved. With John, we acknowledge our lowliness. But with him, we also acknowledge our great and high Lord, of whom we are not worthy, and yet who stands right here in our midst. John was not worthy of Jesus. And yet Jesus came to John to be baptized by him and to stand in the place of sinners. You are not worthy of Jesus. And yet, Jesus came and removed all the accusations that stood against you by taking away your sins. Jesus bore those accusations, and because he has taken the accusations, then when the accusations of the devil come to you, they come to you empty. As it says in Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are still not worthy of Jesus, and yet Jesus comes to us still, giving us his very body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. 
So we saw how John defeated both the flattery and accusations of the devil. He did so by confessing. He confessed the truth about himself. He confessed the truth about Christ. And this is how we prepare for Christmas. We confess that we are lowly sinners in opposition to the devil's flattery. And we confess that our great and high Lord has humbled himself into our midst in order to save us in opposition to the devil's accusation. Thus, we have neither pride nor despair. Pride from flattery, despair from accusations, both of which focus us on ourselves. Rather, we have honor for Christ, that great lover of mankind. And now, having properly prepared us to receive our Lord, John bows out and leaves us to the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.